Well, thank you all for coming along today. Uh, my name is Jonathan Giles. Today's talk is going to be on uh, the Scenic View tool that we uh, make available. Uh, if you want to contact me, those are the best ways to contact me, uh, jonathan.giles at oracle.com or on Twitter at Jonathan Giles. Uh, I, I wasn't too sure whether I had to include this or not, so I thought for the sake of being an Oracle employee, I'd better just say don't make any purchasing decisions today based on what I'm telling you. Uh, just a quick summary on who I am. I've worked at Oracle and Sun for the last three and a half years. I'm the team technical lead for the UI controls team. I blog a fair bit on fxexperience.com and on my personal website, jonathangiles.net. Uh, I've been a long-time client-side developer, first of all on Swing, but more recently on JavaFX. Uh, and I've worked on a quite a few open source projects, one of which is soon to be uh, Scenic View. It's not quite open source just yet, but it will be soon. So what is Scenic View? Uh, this is a screenshot of the application, and I really just want to give a really high level overview to start with. It's a user interface uh, that basically lets you drill into your uh, JavaFX applications at runtime. And I'll drill into what all these, uh, what, it, what it all means as we get through the slides. So it's free, it's a JavaFX SceneGraph Analyzer. Like I said, it will be open source by the end of the year. Um, we're just kind of going through a bit of a uh, clean up and a security audit and all those kind of things. Uh, it's an open source project that's my hobby. It's not my day job. Oracle doesn't pay me to work on this. Uh, and I'm not the only one developing it. There's one or two other people that develop it in their spare time as well. If you want to find out more about it, go to this website, fxexperience.com, send it view. Uh, so, CineView started a long time ago. It was an internal Oracle tool built by a colleague of mine, Amy Fowler. And if people don't know who Amy Fowler is, she is a, uh, the queen of layout inside JavaFX, as well as Swing before it. Uh, and the tool was very simple back then. Basically, you'd write scenicview.show and pass in a scene, and uh, then your application will come up, and then scenicview will also come up. And what it basically let you do at that point was very simple. It would show you the scene graph on the left-hand side and all the properties on the right-hand side. And for the first release, all I did was take Amy's code, made it look a bit nicer because it was pretty uh, rough back then, and released it earlier this year. Uh, it was internal to Oracle for a very long time, so it, was, it took me a long time to convince people to release it publicly. But when it came out, it looked a little like this. And uh, like I say, on the left-hand side, you see basically the scene graph of your application. So for people not familiar with Java or FX, you have a scene graph and you have a root node and from that branches out all your nodes that make up your user interface. So you can see here, that this user interface has a tile pane right at the top of it with a few rectangles, uh, a few groups, buttons. And basically clicking on the scene graph on the left let you see the properties on the right. So you can see for the selected button, it has a style class of button, it has a drop shadow, uh, you can tell where it is. On, and Amy built it basically so that she could diagnose bugs in, in her code, in her layout APIs. So like I said, on the, basically it's broken down to the left-hand side uh, and the right-hand side with a little bit of a summary at the bottom there just for your application. So it tell you the dimensions of the stage, the scene, and how many nodes you had in it. And even at that point, it's a very, very useful tool because when you build an application, you don't actually know what's going on deep down in the scene graph uh, without putting a whole bunch of print lines in your code, which is never nice. So this tool kind of let you see visually your entire scene graph and what the properties were. The other very nice thing that I liked about it was it would do this overlay uh, inside your application. So you can see here there's a uh, green dashed rectangle that shows the layout bounds, and there's a uh, yellow filled rectangle that shows the bounds and parent. And if you're not familiar with JavaFX, there's a few different uh, bounds, basically. And the, the layout bounds is just, the uh, in this case, the square, whereas the bounds and parent takes into account the fact that it's rotated 45 degrees. So it's a very easy way to kind of understand uh, the visuals of your user interface. And we had a lot of feedback, people saying that they really, really like Scenic View, but they would always say, I really, really wish it would do X. And X, there were so many different things that people wanted, whether it be live editing so they could, you know, edit within Scenic View, like the layout position, and that be reflected dynamically inside the user interface. The ability to filter uh, properties or the scene graph to find what they're looking for. Uh, the ability to kind of do what you do in fine, uh, Firebug, where you uh, can move your mouse around the application and see the properties of the, the hover node. 
and things like event tracing where you can actually track what events are going through your system as you move your mouse through it or you click around in it. And as time's gone on, we've actually added all these features. Uh, and so we're always on the lookout for more feedback, for more feature requests. Uh, and if you've got anything you want to uh, add and send it to you, feel free to email me uh, and we'll certainly consider it. Around about the, the time of the first release, uh, th this guy here, Ander, uh, uh, contacted me. And he was very, very impressed. But he had his own tool that ha did some things that just didn't look as nice as uh, Scenic View. So he decided to stop developing his tool uh, and start programming Scenic View with me. And so he and I worked together on the first version, uh, which we called 1.0.0, uh, just because we needed a, you know, a, a numbering scheme. So this was the first numbered release. And it kind of evolved a little bit since the last screenshot. Uh, you can see up the top left there, there's now some filters that are starting to appear on the user interface. And these give you the ability to filter the green area based on either the ID of the node or the class of the node. So, for example, if you typed into class uh, filter area uh, button, you'd see three or four of the buttons that are there would become bold and all the rest of the uh, nodes in the scene graph would fade out. The other nice thing that we did in the, one, the first release was... Uh, the property filter, which does exactly the same thing. It filters the right-hand side as you type in. So if you want to find uh, all the properties that start with the layout, you can type layout into the property filter, and that would filter the right-hand side so everything kind of collapses down and disappears. It isn't related to the layout. The next complaint that we heard from people uh, after we released that 1.0.0 release was they really didn't want to have to write scenicview.show uh, in their code. They didn't want to modify their code uh, to get Scenic View to come up. And this was a very interesting uh, but quite complex problem to solve. Uh, so what we basically needed was a way to connect to the person's application at runtime uh, without modifying their code. In the, in the end, after lots of kind of hacking, we settled on two different solutions. First of all, we have a Java agent uh, in our more recent releases. And basically what you do is you pass in this command, uh, fourth line down, Java agent, and then you pass in a reference to the scenic view jar file. And what this does is basically, when your application starts up, it will start up the scenic view agent at the same time, and the scenic view agent will connect to your application. And so the best way to use this approach, if you're using an IDE such as Eclipse or NetBeans, you have two separate run profiles, one for uh, your application as per usual, and one for your application that also starts up scenic view. The second approach that we uh, settled on was basically what's known as the attach API. And that basically tells you at runtime all the uh, available VMs on your machine, all the, all the running Java applications, basically. And it kind of lets you connect to it, but only very weakly. And so what we do with that connection is we basically throw in a, a, a socket server into your application at runtime that, they can, <coughs> that can then communicate back to your scenic view uh, application. And so the nice thing about this approach is that you don't have to do anything to your application at all. You don't need to change the run profiles. You don't need to uh, uh, you know, add code into your application. You just start Scenic View up, and it'll discover your, your applications at runtime. Uh, and so this was encapsulated in the Scenic View 1.1.0 release. Uh, and this came out August the 14th, so not too long ago, just a few months back now. Uh, and the thing is, this release kind of required us to do a lot of reworking of our code, uh, basically so that we could do this remote connection to your application. And it took a lot of effort to get it working on Windows, Mac, and Linux, but we're mostly there now. We occasionally get bug reports from people that things aren't working right, and we're always keen to hear from people who are having problems because it's the only way we can make it better. In fact, two days later, we released 1.1.1, uh, which basically lets us learn more about why your program's failing. So it has a debug option now. So on September 25th, just before Java 1, uh, we released Scenic View 1.2, which added a whole bunch more. It added event tracing, Java dot browsing, better menus, a whole bunch of bug fixes. And the nice thing about this release is we, we added in this tab area. So it was where we're going to add future features. So now there's the details tab as well as the events tab and the Java.doc browsing tab. So this is the event tracing tab, uh, and I'll show a demo of it later on. But basically what it lets you do is uh, specify what you want to 
focus on. So you can specify what part of the scene graph you're interested in. Uh, and any event that happens there will come up on this uh, screen. So it's enabled from the events menu. And the events menu only comes up when you're on the events tab. You can also type into the text filter uh, a, a Boolean expression. So if you want to hear any event that happens on a particular source, uh, and it's a certain event type, you can type in Boolean expressions to uh, narrow down what's shown in the table view. And if you click on the uh, info button on the right-hand side, uh, it will show you the entire stack trace for how that event came about. One other feature is uh, people wanted the ability to see what the Java docs were for a selected node. So when you select, for example, tab pane in the tree up there, uh, the Java doc for tab pane will load to the right. So you can kind of understand more about uh, your JavaFX API at the same time. And today, just as we announced 1.2 at uh, uh, Java 1, 1 1.3 is out today. Uh, and it's quite a big release. Uh, the main one for me really was we tracked down a huge sort number of performance problems uh, and we plugged a lot of gaps there. Uh, so it's a lot faster now. It used to be quite slow, especially when you were scrolling a table view, for example. Uh, but also it has this concept of an animation tracer now, which basically shows you all the animations in your application and lets you stop them and kind of pause them in real time, uh, which is quite useful if you think in animations something's going wrong with your application due to an animation. It has a lot better CSS support, so it can browse the state of all the CSS uh, in your application. Uh, version checking, Mac menu bar integration, a whole bunch of bug fixes and miscellaneous improvements. So I guess before I do the demo, I should probably flick over here because I've actually got to make Scenic View 1.3 available. Whilst that's happening, so I'll just start up an application. All right, so this is a tree table control, and um, we'll bring up Scenic View. So basically, what's happening? I brought up the tree table. And I started up Scenic View over here, and it's already found the, uh, the tree table application. So one thing I mentioned right at the beginning was it shows, uh, as you click through here, you can see that this is area here is becoming uh, yellow, and it's got the green dashes yes, around the outside of the rectangle. And basically, uh, so you can learn, you know, what is the group, that group that this is referring to, or what is the tab pane. Um, you know, you can dive right down into what are these table column headers. You know, why does that table column header exist? You know, you can start asking questions about your user interface, uh, and you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, for example, now we've got this table column header selected. We can edit, for example, the layout. So instead of being 400, let's make it, oops, So we just, you know, we just moved across, and we've actually done that in the scene graph. So we've modified the scene graph uh, dynamically, and it's still interactive from that position. It's kind of confused the entire application because we're kind of breaking the rules. We're kind of getting into the scene graph, but you can see, you know, it's still fully interactive. I don't know what's going to happen. All right, so it's still kind of moving. Now, for example, let's see if we want to find, uh, I don't know, this group. As you type in, see it kind of fades out everything that's not a group. And there's another group there. Same on the other side. If we're interested in, say, opacity. Oops. See, this is my, uh, pre uh, this is one of my buggy versions, so occasionally it crashes like this, so just close that down. I'm already running something close to 1.4. So as you type in opacity, it kind of shows you uh, what properties there are on the right-hand side that relate to opacity. Right, 
right, so let's start uh, tracing some events. So I've enabled uh, filtering, uh, so just enable event tracing so from that tab here to skin. So now if I move my mouse into here, there we go. So this is showing all the events that just happened whilst I moved my mouse over there. In fact, let's just, first of all, let's type in, I guess, click. So nothing's happened there. So now I'll go over into here. Click, hopefully, let's see. Oh, there we go. So now it's showing the uh, clicked events that happened on the uh, tab. And we can kind of see how did that bubble up uh, from the very ba bottom level all the way up uh, until it was caught by scenic view. So uh, this is quite useful if you're kind of wondering how events are happening in your system. And these are the ones that have just happened uh, in that kind of uh, yellow area of the top left there. So there's the uh, Java doc as, as I kind of showed. Animations is still kind of an in development feature. Uh, it basically shows you uh, the animations on your system as they uh, as it's running. So there's no animations here, but uh, and what it lets you do is actually, like I said, pause the animations uh, whilst your application is running, so you can kind of understand what's going on. So let's just turn off the bounds overlay so you can see your application. Then we can do this component highlight thing where as you move your mouse around, you get this feedback on uh, what, what you're currently hovering over and what the X, Y, and width and height are. And you can click on it and it will be selected over in the center view. You can uh, have ruler overlays. You can configure the rulers. There's a, there's a whole bunch of uh, settings here that hopefully make some form of sense, but we're always working on the help documentation. Speaking of which, um, let's publish this, and then we'll go to. So if you go to fxexperience.com, uh, scenic view slash help, uh, it's going to uh, bring up, up the help documentation, which I'll, I'll go back to shortly once it's uh, working. And this seems a bit slow here. Uh, one thing that we also do is uh, track the downloads, and we're quite happy with the downloads of Java uh, with of Scenic View. Uh, you can see there at the top uh, that was the first release. Uh, the bottom is the most recent release. So we're doing, you know, roughly 500 downloads, a thousand downloads uh, per release is kind of the kind of the window that we're in. Hopefully, uh, Scenic View 1.3 will be another good release. Uh, uh, and the reason why we have some very low downloads there is just because we have released quite rapidly at some points, and some of them were beta releases as well. So uh, we were kind of always left scratching our head about what we should do in the next release, and we were always keen to hear feedback uh, about what's the future of Scenic View. So I, I always kind of ask people, should I just pack my bag and uh, stop developing Scenic View, or does, uh, if you've got any opinions on what you want to see, uh, I would love for you to email me. That's my email address there again. Uh, the one I always hear that we haven't quite answered yet is that they, people want it open source, and that's definitely on the cards. In fact, it's going to be open source as part of the OpenJFX uh, project, which is the open source JavaFX development. Uh, and that was it. I wanted to kind of leave some time for Q&A. Uh, so if anyone's got any questions, feel free to shout out. Otherwise, here's the uh, help documentation that I mentioned it's a rather long document with a bunch of pictures kind of detailing everything about uh, how to use the interview. And also there's a bunch of questions and answers down the bottom as well. So certainly the best site for downloading uh, and learning more about the interview is fxexperience.com slash scenic view. And hopefully now there should be a uh, download link to 1.3. All right, so yeah, there we go. 1.3 is available for download and a quick blog post. Uh, that's it. Uh, is, anyone have any questions? Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, not short and sweet, but it makes it nice and easy. Thank you. <laughs>